Alright. Alright. Oh! Yeah. Back in person. Back. Yeah. And live. Oh. Been busy. Back anyway. Yeah, busy couple weeks, but we're back, so that's cool. Um, it's Jags week. This season, I feel like it's been flying by consistently. It has been. Yeah, I feel like it's been majority of a blur and all these injuries i feel like i just been like repressing every every single day uh of and, the season and it's like well how many question marks we got this yeah, week Mike? We, we literally just looked over who's all hurt and mm-hmm. if i would, well, i think i'd rather list the amount of people that aren't hurt than the people that are because so who's playing this week yeah it's a laundry list man it's huge it's yeah a lot of question marks but i feel like a lot of people are going to play um, one that stands out, I feel like isn't going to play is Amari Cooper, obviously is, uh, in con- concussion protocol and also rib injury. Um, well, he, he it hasn't been officially said that he was going to miss this week, but he still has a practice. This yes. Week. And with a concussion protocol, we discussed with DTR, if it hasn't happened by Thursday, you're probably not going to play on Sunday. So, Fair. um, yeah, that's. We'll, we'll see. But also... Speaking about DTR... Yeah, he has still not been cleared. Um, so, But he was limited at practice, but he that did, doesn't, he, doesn't mean he cleared concussion. Yes, hasn't cleared protocol yet, has came back to practice. I don't know really how that works, but um, he's they gotta, limited. They got to test if he can have the physical ability yeah. to keep going. Yeah. And, you know, in my opinion, I feel like Flacco will start on Sunday. Verse... It's a given. Yeah, verse... A possible Jaguars team with their starting quarterback as CJ Beathard. No, no, I call cap. I think Trevor Lawrence faked it. He's playing Sunday. I don't know that 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 he's already practicing again. I know, but it looked rough. Like that did look rough. High ankle sprain um, could cause some issue, especially with mobility. He's a mobile mobile kind of guy. A lot of rollouts and makes a lot of plays. Um, on the sides of the fields. So when that's limited, it kind of reminds me of kind of like what we saw at Joe Burrow the first three weeks of the season. And I know it's a different part of the leg, but you know, when you're mobile and you try to run around to make plays happen and that's thrown out, you're a very limited quarterback when you're that kind of quarterback. So we'll see, even if he does start, I don't think we'd see a 100% healthy, um, you know, you see it moving and running. Uh, you see a little bit different packages, I would imagine. A little bit more uh, quick throws and uh, shotgun kind of guy um, this week rather than the normal Trevor Lawrence we would normally see. But if he does play, that's what I'd imagine he'd have. If he didn't, C.J. Beathard is a big question mark and is also questionable with a shoulder injury. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's a very interesting uh, week. And also uh, Christian Kirk is out. So, they have a lot of question marks. So, coming, you know, into Cleveland, supposed to be mid-40s and light rain is the forecast at the moment. Who knows? It's going to be a lot of running, I'd imagine. Uh, I hope. I'd hope it's a lot of running. Hopefully, Joe Flacco doesn't have to drop back for 44 times this week. Um, But you never know. We might just, you know, in a downpour, throw it 50 times. Uh, that's the great question, Mark. Yeah, well, I, I think what we we just spoke about with uh, the Jacksonville offense, depending on who's playing quarterback, I think it really doesn't matter. Um, I If Lawrence does play, he's going to be limited on mobility, so he's going to have to stick around in the pocket, and that's one of his major weapons is his leg, um, legs. Uh just he, one of them. He's just, been, his, just his right leg is, is the, yeah. the X factor. Well, it really, it <laughs> has been. He he had to deal with a knee injury in the beginning of the season. So that's been kind of slowing him down. On top of an, another ankle injury yeah. um, that he originally had this ankle injury back a couple weeks ago against Pittsburgh. Um, so it just keeps on stacking up. So you might, if he does he's got, play, he's got one crutch. He's just wheeling it out. Yeah. <laughs> if, if he does play, he's going to be a little, uh, like a statue in the pocket. I, I would imagine. Um, 
So what I would think the Browns should do is, uh, just because Jacksonville kind of makes their money out of the shotgun and running a lot of short plays, um, just checking out what they did on Monday night against the Bengals, they run a lot of short game and just trying to mix mix up what's going on in the backfield, changing directions, making the linebackers, keeping their eye on the play. Um I think what the Browns should do is play a lot of man coverage or even cover three just to like shorten up the middle of the field. That way he's going to have to make tight throws mm -hmm. and shut down those those windows. Um, and that way the Browns got to get, get to the quarterback this week. Yeah. Um, it's been a... It's been a real problem the last two weeks. They haven't had a sack in two weeks. That's crazy. Um, I mean, it doesn't help Miles is hurt, but... It's true. I mean, they've had to play two offenses that have run really, really quick games. You got Russell Wilson that was really mobile, and you had Stafford that was just, like, getting the ball out in two seconds. Darts. Um, yeah. So I think you're going to see kind of the same thing we did last week. But... It's going to be a quarterback that's one or the other is pretty banged up. Um, this is not the greatest offensive line in the league. Uh, they have a good run game in Travis Etienne. Also um, questionable, but I imagine will play. Also struggled against the Cincinnati Bengals, who are <laughs> towards the bottom of the league and stopping the run. Um, their, their weapons are kind of running thin with Kirk out, but you still have... Um, Zay Jones out there. Calvin Ridley. Calvin Ridley and Evan Ingram. So there's a lot of speed. Yes. Yeah. Um, Parker Washington had a big game on Monday night. Uh, one of uh, Jacksonville's uh, top three-round picks. Um, he had over 100 yards and a touchdown. Um, so they could look for him to yeah. spark that offense. But I think one person that is going to be absolutely massive that we've missed the last two weeks that is going to be playing – on Sunday, is Denzel Ward is back. Thank God, um, this is gonna be huge. Yeah. We've missed them. There's, there's, you know, Mike Ford has not played terrible, but oh my God, is that is such a huge drop off from Denzel Ward, and um, we need him back. Clearly, uh, it, it's been a problem. So that's gonna be super awesome. But let's run in some cowtails. How you feeling? Who you tossing this out to? First one. Oh, Denzel Ward. Denzel Ward. Look at that name. Yeah, the, this is just to go off what we just talked about is they're going to be running a lot of man coverage this week, and you need your number one man coverage corner you need out them. there. Um, I think Greg has done a solid job. I mean, he hasn't had the easiest job over the last two weeks, but it's time for Denzel to pop, pop right back in and be your lockdown corner, put him out there against their best player, and shut him down. I mean, he ranks number one in the league in passing rating against him. Um, I mean, he also ranks number one in man coverage in the league. So it's going to be really good to have him back. Maybe that was part of our issue why we couldn't get any pressure on a quarterback. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, because we always talk about it. You, the balance of having the secondary be locked down gives you more time of that quarterback looking for a read. And that gives you more push with your defensive line to really close that pocket. And when they're able to throw it out there within say, two seconds and you have no time to get to the quarterback, when you have a guy like Denzel that's like shut down with your number one receiver, your go-to guy, you know, imagine him last week on, uh, what's that cool? Yes. Like that would have been a, a different game in my opinion, but, um, that wasn't the scenario. Pooks. So. Yeah, if I was going to toss one out here, it is <laughs> Jerome Ford. <laughs> <laughs> what did, did you want me to say it? No, <laughs> no, I was just going to see what you were going to do. Uh, Jerome Ford, this run game needs to start going. He kind of had a pretty lacking last week, although he didn't get the touches I think he deserved. I'm not sure if it was an injury-related thing, but uh, we need to see one of those games that you know are you know 80 and above. You know, 100, 100 game run would be awesome. Really get the pressure off whoever our starting quarterback is. I imagine it's Joe Flacco. But I don't want to see Flacco throw 40 times. I don't want to see it, you know. You know, high 20s, low 30s, fine. That's completely fine. But 
Like, we need to have, strike that balance that I just have not seen the last couple of weeks. Um, you know, run it. Run it more. Um, pressure off Flacco. Flacco said this is his second week. His th what, third week on the team? Fourth week on the team? Um, give him some help. So I think that running back core, led by Jerome Ford, is really going to have to step up this week. Yep, um, I definitely agree. And I think our, our final... Final cocktail goes to. Um, we're gonna have to say Cedric Tillman. Um, you know, this is a receiving core that's banged up, yeah, it's been uh leading the league in drops. Um, and I think it just has been off the last two weeks, really. Yeah, um, it, the drops have been awful. I mean, I'm talking wide open ones across the middle of the field, crazy. They gotta hold on to the ball. Um, but with Amari Cooper potentially out on Sunday, most likely out, should yeah, I say. I mean, um, you need someone to step up. Um, you And you saw it out of Elijah Moore. Yes. But I think it's going to come out of Cedric Tillman this week. Um, this is a Jacksonville secondary that's kind of middle of the pack, 20th against the pass. Um, they're not very good at stopping the run as well. Um, but... This is a good opportunity for some young receivers to get some shine. I thought David Bell had some clutch catches. I think it might not only have been one, but um, it was where it needed to be. Yeah, he. <laughs> I think it was like a third down. Like, yeah, like third it was a very something. tough catch, and yeah, they needed it. Um, but this is what this is a game they can't let get away from them like it has the last couple of weeks. Um, I think it's going to help that they're at home. Um, I do feel like the scores from the last two weeks don't really measure up to how they actually played. Not at all, yeah. It, it always seemed like the game kind of fell apart in the last, like, five minutes of the game. Yeah. Like, you look at okay, the we, 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 we went for it on fourth and short on their side of the field with a couple minutes left. Yeah. It went from being a six-point game to a 17-point game. And it's like, well, you know, one point it was a one point game, and then then it was a sixteen point game. With yeah, the, like thing. within two minutes, it, it's kind of yeah, it sucks. But you know, hopefully they can get past it this week. Um, I think Joe played well enough last week to Three. get the win, yeah. and then you could say the same thing about DTR the week before, that both quarterbacks played well enough. They're not great. But like it's not like they were turning the ball over. It really the wasn't right. their fault, like especially with DTR, like we've talked about. It's it, man. You you add six of those drop passes onto his stat line. Different conversation. What we're talking about. He didn't go nineteen for thirty four. No, he would have went like twenty five for thirty four. Like those. That's a good percentage. But when you add these these drop balls, and it's weird. We're talking Amari Cooper and. Uh, David and Joku leading those drops, it makes no sense to me. But yeah. Um, yeah, we look at this this receiving core now. If if Amari's not out there, you're looking at Elijah Moore, Cedric Tillman, uh, Marquise Goodwin, and David Bell. I, that is a very shaky uh, receiving core that we have not seen much about. And I don't outside of Elijah Moore, none of those guys have over a hundred yards receiving on the year. Scary. That's scary. That's a scary stat line. So hopefully there's that one guy that could really step up. Um, keys of the game. Um, Royal Donuts keys of the game. I'm sorry I missed the... Um, yeah, like we talked about, you know, have... We need to have that guy, in my opinion. We need to have a receiver to step up and, and just help out the offense. We just need these guys to not drop the ball, make big-time plays, and just make the plays that are required, right? Like, even if it's, you know, third and four, and you, you, you get you throw it at, you know, at the, at the first down, get that extra effort, ca just catch the ball. It's it's freaking huge. And we talk, it's the most dropped balls, like, that we've seen in the entire NFL at this point. You gotta make those plays. Yeah, yeah. So that's a, that's a key. You are catching balls. Both of them. Balls. Bulls. So that's what the, are we that's doing? Can pay a million dollars to drop some balls. Good God! All right, I think the number two is 
Pressure the quarterback. Wow. You got a quarterback playing with one fucking leg. <laughs> they got a very banged up offense line. They don't have their starting left tackle and Walker Little. Get after the goddamn quarterback. Where have we been the last two weeks? Um, I, I, This is where the Browns defense is starting to seem like they're coming back to reality. And they're the Browns defense from last year. Because mm. they've been very... Ugh. I mean, they've made stops, but it's like last week, where was it? You know, they, they looked mediocre last week. Um, and you got a quarterback that's who's still very good, and he can burn you, but he's banged up. So the best way to stop that is get in his damn face. Um, you shut down a lot of things when you do that. You shut down the run game, and it's all going to be peachy from there. You can do that. You can win this game. Yeah. You're at home. You got to ride the vibes of this Cleveland Brown fan base. Absolutely. This is a crucial goddamn game. This is December football in Cleveland, and it actually means something. I mean, Steelers just lost last night, so... It means even more. Yeah, but an 8-5 and five team, like we've talked about, looks a lot better than a 7-6 and six team. So, let's make this happen. Get your, okay, so right now, the Browns stay at 70% to get in the playoffs. If they lose this game, they drop down to 53%. If they win this game, they move up to 83% chance to get in the playoffs i mean it just tells you how big this game is jacksonville they dropped a big game last week and they got the colts and the texans trying to catch them from behind they're banged up they're trying to stay in they haven't been perfect yeah so this game just it has a little bit of oomph to it some hot spot like this is a the game that means something this is basically a playoff game and we we need to be able to pull this off. We need to show up this weekend. Yeah, it's a big game. It's raining. It's December. It means something. It's Cleveland Brown football at its finest. I think it's it's time that we put it together and get a big win. I'm getting chills, man. Ooh. I'm getting chills. Ooh. Uh, yeah, I, I can't I can't agree more. Right. But. <laughs> All right, I'm not going to forget the last key to the game. Um, it's been my my last two every the last two weeks. Um, it's get rid of the dumb little penalties. It's been kicking our ass last week. Especially. The last two weeks, it's the last two weeks have been identical mm-hmm. with these penalties. They start the first couple drives. They get a big stop, or they get a third and long or something like that, and there's an offside penalty. Then there's another offside penalty. Then we have a pass interference. And then we have a moving the snap. We have yeah. a legal shift, a legal formation. These are all pre-snap penalties that are these are they're basically numb skull penalties. Like offsides, I think, is a little more uh, excusable because you're being aggressive on the line of scrimmage. But illegal shifts, illegal formation, false starts, these are not excusable. They're, you know the snap. They don't. Yeah. That's the, that's the whole point. You know the play. They don't. So don't mess that up. You know where to be. They don't. So why are we messing that up? You spend weeks and weeks and weeks preparing to do this. I mean, you've been practicing these plays. You've been in these formations since goddamn July. I mean, hell, even April, if you want to go all the way back to OTAs, mm-hmm. um, you, you should have it down. It's uh, These things cause you games. Um, we've seen it over and over again this year. There has not been a game we've lost this year that hasn't been off turnovers and penalties. I'm going to be beating this drum. Until it's solved. Um, every game we've won, we've kept it underneath five penalties. Yeah. It's, um, it's a good drum to beat. Yeah. I mean, it's it's just we, we need to clean it up if we want any chance of playing in mid-January. Agreed. Yeah. Um, well, that wraps up that part. Uh, 
What's some uh, Mike Lewis real estate keys or keys? Game, game to watch. watch. Game to watch. Oh, Kanuka. Ah, uh, what are you going with? Well, you got to go with the classic rivalry this week. Um, and it's not the NFC rivalry; it's the AFC rivalry. Uh, I think you you play it. They play almost every year in the playoffs, um, but they didn't last year because they one of them got stunned by the Boogles and Buffalo, and uh, the screw ups of Buffalo go to the Kansas City Chokers, um, where they're both coming off losses. Um, I don't know. Josh Allen kind of sucks. Um, it's weird. But it's weird. He's finally getting exposed. Yeah. You got Twin Tower Sean Dermott McDermott comparing the fucking football team to Al Qaeda. Like, okay. Ooh. Yeah. It, Go Bills. Yeah. Fuck ups. I just feel like they hit like it's like it was going up, but then it's coming crashing down. And <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know if he's just kind of like hit his ceiling or what's going on, but those interceptions are real. I've bet on... Their offense is awful. Yeah, well, they've continued to have zero run game, but I will say James Cook is the only thing that's been making this look decent over the last couple of weeks. <laughs> it's, it, it is that weird dynamic that they have no run game, but their best offensive player is their running back. I, <laughs> like, what is going on? You know, like, Diggs, the, Diggs the, is still clutch. Their offensive line has been, eh. And yeah. then they're, they, they've had, Stefan Diggs has been on a milk carton box this, this <laughs> yeah. year. Um, and then Allen's just, like, rolling out, and he's just like, fuck it. <laughs> just fuck it. throws it. Triple coverage. Yeah, triple coverage. Or just completely overthrows the deep ball to the safety. Oh, it's funny. Basically, like, but, a punt. Um, then you got the Kansas City PJ Swifts. PJ Walker punt, punt throw. <laughs> uh, you got you got Taylor Swift making her appearance, playing quarterback this weekend. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yeah. and team. running back. Yeah, <laughs> so her stat line is going to be pretty high. Um, how many songs could she write about the the Chiefs? Um, also, real quick, did you see that that uh, AI Photoshop of her and uh, Andy Reid? No. <laughs> oh. I'll show it to you after. Don't worry about you it. Might as well pull it up in the video. Look it up. Yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> um. But, anyways, this is a crucial game. And en enough jokes. I think we had a little fun. But it's a big game. Um, just the a little, a little yeah, rally. Just a little rally. <laughs> the <laughs> the Chiefs. The Chiefs are fighting for their number one spot in the conference, and they're fumbling the bag. Jacksonville had their shot. They fumbled the bag. Baltimore, I think, might seal it up this week. But you also got the Miami Dolphins that are just running away with it, I think. Um, so this is a real big toss-up. You got Buffalo just trying to get into the playoffs. You yeah. have to, you have to like make your way through the bottom of the wild card with the Colts and the Texans, who are just looking really good right now. Yeah, with a backup quarterback and a rookie quarterback. I mean, this is a uh, oh, both of them have rookie head coaches as well. So just add to them the magic of it's the, crazy the AFC South right now. It's a crazy year. Yeah, um, and if throw my game in there, it's really is can the Eagles just kind of assert their dominance and just roll into the playoffs and reassert their dominance? Redo it. Yes, you're. Right. <laughs> they got took into the woodshed last week against the Niners. It was ugly, but in their specific division against the Cowboys this week. So in Dallas. Yes. So it is going to be a whole different atmosphere. It was last game. And uh, yeah, I, there's not much to say about this game. It just really like, I don't know, you know, play it back kind of deal. Possibly, you know, will, will that uh, Eagles offense just blow up and just be amazing. Because um, last time they played, I had Dallas' defense on my fantasy team. I got two points, um, which is not good. Last week, Dallas' defense got me negative one. So they have not been playing their best defensive ball. And if, if this Eagles offense shows up, man, it's it, it could get messy. Um, but on the, on the flip side, this Dallas offense looks really good right now. It looks really good. So 
I don't know. I have no I have no prediction for this game, but I'm I'm here for it. I'm excited about it. So that's all I gotta say about that. Um predictions for this Browns Jacksonville game. How you feeling? What's your what's your prediction? I'm gonna go fourteen thirteen. Browns! Okay, thank God. Oh my god. Is that with Lawrence or with CJ Beathard? Doesn't matter. Okay, good. Doesn't matter. Good. Rain or shine. The Browns and Joe Flacco will get a dub and break their losing streak this week. Like, yeah, like I texted like with the uh, Joe Flacco thing. I, I texted you it was like it's like an alternate universe where the Browns never left Cleveland. <laughs> Flacco jersey. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go Jeez. 43 to three. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Let's, Eagles. <laughs> Eagles. Let's go. Uh, 27 24 Browns. I think they I think I think we will weirdly see a game where they do get quite a bit of points, even in the rain. Uh but I, I think it's gonna come down to a field goal. And um, you know, I so said with with Lawrence or not, I think this his how limited he's gonna be is gonna be the problem. And with CJ Beathard, who the hell knows? But I think the Browns pull this one off. Pull it off. Yeah. So with that, thanks for watching. Go bronze. See you on Monday. Uh, Browns. <laughs>